Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial which you can probably tell us how to draw and paint eyes. So in this one I'm going to be doing three eyes straight from my head that are pretty realistic. So first off get the circle selective tool, do a circle and then go to stroke, and then go to six pixels and then black. You want to do that twice until you get a sort of pattern like I have here. Some may say it looks like a certain thing and wheels and so on. Whatever you want to do, make your own shape, think of it how you will, whatever helps you out. So after that I'll put a circle through a middle, a tear duct just below the middle line, and then a dash above the middle line. So the circle is the tear duct, and that will be where the eye joins, and the dash will also be where the eye joins. So it's a little bit horrible, it's not just straight, it's a little, it has a little bit more character to it. This is pretty much how I have found the eye to work, and right here, I am going through a little bit of expression. So the left one is normal, the middle one is shocked, and the right one is stone slash slash sad. So with a little bit of adjustment with those lines right there, you can get a few different expressions. You can um, observe a few cartoons and check them out and figure out what which is happy, which is sad, which is what the hell, and so on. Um, so now after that, I'm just going to sort of do the shape. So for the normal eye, you should probably copy this if you're new to drawing eyes, because this is the default shape. So right above the iris on the right above the top of the iris where it joins on the right, you can see that's the highest raise, and that is pretty much true for every eye. Um, that's where I found all the raises to be. But this also sort of can change slightly depending. So if you're drawing a general eye, I would put the raise there, and for the bottom eyelid, it pretty much stays the same because it's the top eyelid that folds down where the bottom one sort of stays stationary. So the bottom one will always be a little bit curved and always have that sort of shape where the top one will differ slightly. But this all depends on angle of the face and so on. You, it, it gets a bit more complicated, but for this one, we'll just try and stay basic. So here I'm just sort of making a little bit of um, variation in value. So I'm making a sort of palette out of black and white. And here I'm taking things I'm putting I'm doing things a little bit different. So instead of just drawing an eye and then putting white on the left and right and then so on, I'm sort of approaching the eye like a sphere. So where I put the dashes, which you can see on the right there, that's where that's where the light source is hitting. So that's where a highlight would be, and then there would sort of be a shadow and midtone and so on, sort of like a sphere. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out the Sphere Tutorials, because uh, this is pretty much an advanced version. So after that, I'm sort of smoothing out the values, so it's got a nice transition to it. And now I'm going to move to the middle one. The middle one's slightly harder, because where the light hits, it's a little bit above the middle on both ends. And so that would mean there would be a shadow on the left and the bottom. So right before the bottom eyelid, there would just be a shadow. So, as you can see, it doesn't look right just yet, but you'll you'll eventually start to build up, and you'll see what I mean. So after I've done those two, it's all on. It's all about moving to the norm. Now the norm will look a little bit better to you than the other two, but this is mainly because the norm is what we look at all the time. Um, it's what we tend to draw all the time, and it's pretty much the default. Another reason is because I think the ones on the right have a bit too much contrast at the present time. So after I've got that generally laid out, I'm just going to smooth it out just a tiny bit more so it's nice and smooth. Because an eye doesn't really have, you know, muddy little textures and all that sort of stuff. It's, it needs to, needs to be pretty smooth. After that, I'm just going to draw in the pupil. So just the black part in the middle right there. And then pretty soon I'm going to move on to doing the iris, so putting in a mid middle ground. First though, I'm just doing a little bit of the upper lids and the lower lids. So once again, they're raised right there. They have the same rays, the top rays. Um, as you can see, it varies quite a lot because of the one on the right. The rays would still sort of be there, but it would be more of a stretch than a predominant rays and a predominant um, sort of crease. So now I'm just putting in the a sort of a mid-tone, as you can see. This can, of course, vary with eye color and the way it's hitting it and, you know, highlights and that sort of stuff. But in general, this is what I'm doing at the moment. 
So here I'm just adding in a little bit of light to that eye, to the iris. So where the highlight, where the light is bouncing on, I'm going to make it a little bit brighter, but at the same time I'm going to put a highlight on the opposite side where it's going to be a little bit darker. This will give it a lot of contrast and it will give it a lot of form. So once again, darkness on the opposite side of the light and a little bit of darkness on the edge of the where the light's hitting. The reason why I'm giving it this much contrast is because it's it's eyes without a face. You need it to sort of be interesting. Otherwise, it's just uh, it's a bit boring. Hence me doing three at once and all different shades and balances of light. So once again, I'm just sort of blending in the transitions a little bit more because you can have a jagger, which is a very good effect. But for the most part, considering I'm trying to go a little bit realistic here, it needs to be smooth but at the same time textured. So later on, I'm going to put the texture of the lines going in and out and sort of give it the whole realistic effect, but <laughs> no effect. And then I'm going to do that on a whole separate layer. So the highlight and the textured sort of lines are going to be in a whole separate layer. If you're doing this in pencil, you can pretty much approach everything in the same way with a little bit of adjustment. So as you saw with the white that I'm putting in, just leave that there. If you're going to add in highlights to your eyes, just keep that part blank. Draw a sort of square, put some tape around it, and draw your whole light, then take it off and you'll have a highlight. Tons of tricks you can do, you can pretty much approach it the same way. I'll probably do another tutorial down the line, so don't worry. So once again, I'm just defying the light, the light of the eye here, the, so the iris, and I'm sort of, if, if your iris isn't correctly shaped, if it's a little bit off and jagged here, it's not going to look right, because it needs to be an almost perfect circle. If it's looking a little bit left to the right, this will change. It might be a little bit deformed, but they'll be very, very clean lines. Things might um, have a little bit of a softer look to them because the white sort of hitting them and it has that effect, but for the most part, it has to be very, very clean. Otherwise, yeah, it's not going to look great. So now I'm just sort of adding in a little bit of the upper and lower eyelid and, you know, the general skin. As you can see on the top right one, considering it's coming out a fair bit and the light's hitting in a certain way, there's going to be a fair bit of darkness. As I said, you can approach this any way you want. Although this is basically what I'm doing, you can add some lights here and there and they'll still look realistic. Considering the skin can react in a lot of different ways and has texture and all that sort of stuff, you can add in a whole lot of white highlights. Here I forgot to press record temporarily, but you really didn't miss much. I'm just going to go over the exact same things right now. So, on the left one, as you can see, it's got a nice highlight happening on the top outer lid. So, considering where the light's hitting, that's fairly accurate. Then above that will be a little bit darker, because the light won't reach that properly. Now remember, this is very high contrast light. If it um, is like a normal day, a normal face, it's, not pro it's probably not going to be this much. But just to show you the form, just for you to get it in your head and to help you out here, it, you, it's good to do studies like this. So, once again, I'm tackling that troublish right eye. I can't seem to get it right. I really don't like that top part of the lid. Probably should have got some reference for that, but yeah. You live and you learn. It's all a learning experience. So now I'm still doing it, and I'm just sort of adding in a little bit of texture on the eye with the charcoal, the, what is it, the chalk brush. I'm just putting it at a pretty high size, then going over it, which creates this sort of skin texture pattern, as you can see on the left eye. Okay, so now I'm just sort of defining on the right, so as you can see where the light's coming from, there needs to be a sort of dark line contrasting the uh, hitting of the, the light. And it's all about that form. As you can see now, I'm starting to put in all these little white things just before the eyelid and the iris. This is because the eye is wet. It has this sort of it has this liquid on it, as you can tell, to transition the eye blinking. So that will give it a sort of more wet look, a more realistic look. And you can sometimes you can overdo this, like on the left one at the moment. It looks I think it looks a little bit overdone, but it does add a whole other hint of realism. 
there are a few more things that I'll talk about along the way that add that sort of realism and just hold on. So one second. Let me catch my breath. <sighs> So here, once again, I'm sort of defining where the outer lid is on the middle one. Considering the way the light hitting, there's going to be a little bit of a shadow right there underneath the eyelid, but not too much. Considering the shadow will fade out because there's a whole other section that's sort of in shadow, it's going to fade out and you don't have to add the shadow in there. One thing I will say is, although you think that there would be a lot of shadow in an eye because of the hard light that I'm showing you right now, it's not true. It's not going to be. The white sort of picks up a lot of light regardless. So it, it, it'll be usually brighter than what you think. It's not generally like a sphere in that sense. So just leave it a little bit white. I will say though there is no such thing as a white part in an eye. You can sort of almost get there through highlights, but for the most part nothing on an eye is purely white. It should never be. Because that will sort of, um, that's your highest. You sort of want to build up to that. It might be a few pixels or a few dots or a few things that you put almost pure white, but for the, for the most there's no such thing as white in an eye. And when you're doing this in colour, the white in the eye really picks up a lot of um, ambient light and what's what's around it. So you'll be surprised what the white in an eye can have a tinge of. So it can be blue, which can look pretty good. It can be red, it can be yellow, it can be so on. And it all depends. Um, you can have certain disorders that will change your eye. <laughs> you can um, smoke something that will change your eye a bit. And uh, yeah, I'll probably go into that in a more advanced thing because it's a little bit above at the moment. So once again, I'm I'm adding in this little thing, and I'm starting to add in all these eyelashes, as you can see. I'm sort of doing them individually. This is just for a little bit more realism. Generally, I like to just do the shape of an eyelash, so you don't have to add in all these little things, but considering the tutorial, I thought I should just do it this way. Always remember, though, that considering there's these all black streaks, the little whites that are right next to the eyelashes would be a little bit brighter. I think a good example of eyelashes is the one on the left because they're curving up and they're contouring contouring, and um, that's another thing I should probably talk about. In the middle of an eye if you draw an, a line straight down instead of straight across through the, the pupil the eyelashes will go in that direction so the ones on the left of that line would be going left and the ones on the right would be going right and the ones just directly on that would sort of be varying, so it's straight up to the right or left, you can sort of choose. Okay, so here as you can see I'm adding in, as I said earlier, all these little textured bits in the eye that they give it that hint of realism. I'm not overdoing it, but it's it's looking pretty good. So I'm still adding it in, and because I'm doing this, it's, it is going to have that hint of realism like I was saying before. This is a good tip. If you're doing this in pencil, you can just get a kneaded eraser and just erase those little stripes and tips and then go in with a pencil and sort of add in the little highlights and, and that by just putting in more darks in certain areas. Okay, so I was going to leave it here, but uh, you know how it works. You say that, then all of a sudden you see something you want to fix and you, you debate whether it's good enough and then you just do more. So what I pretty much ended up doing was putting more highlights on where the light's bouncing. Once again, just for a little bit more realism, and <laughs> once again, I do a little bit more than I should. Um, I would just say that these eyes aren't everything that I would... These eyes aren't everything, like, I could go tons further if I was just doing one eye, and probably look a bit better, because I would have had my full attention on it. But as I said, this isn't supposed to be photorealism. Okay, I should probably <laughs> I should probably explain. Um, here I got made another layer and I start to do the highlights. This is pretty much where the light bounces. A good thing to do if you have a highlight and you've done it so where the light bounces, if you put it going on the iris and the pupil, so that um, through that transition and then through to the the iris and the white part, this will give it a lot of dimension, a lot of dimension. Okay, so here we're pretty much done, and this is our three eyes. Um, my favorite's the one on the left, but the one on the right I think has something to it. So the one on the left is a good example of eyelashes, as you can see on the top left eyelid. It's got a good light source and it's got a little bit of texture on it. Um, I, I sort of dramatized the expression slightly 
This is because I prefer it that way. It needs to have a little bit more, considering it's just an eye rather than a whole face. The middle one, it's a pretty good example. I like the highlight. I like where it's bouncing, and I think I could do a little bit more work on it. So possibly I could <laughs> do more, but uh, I'll just leave it. The one on the right, I think, is looking pretty good. There's some, there's some good form there. There's a lot of 3D structure and. I like it, so this is pretty much my eyes, I hope it helped out. In the meantime, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I might even do a second or third tutorial, so the eye and profile, and the eye this way, the eye that way, I could even do different animal eyes if you wanted, so all those cool little, you know, possums and stuff like that. So leave me a comment below if you want to see that, and I shall see you next time. Bye.